Got a project to duplicate some parts of a front porch and railing and this was built back in the uh, early 80s and I need to duplicate it because the option to replace it isn't there. Coming up. I'm Roger and welcome to the shop and what I've got coming up here is something a little bit different. I am uh, repairing a front porch and railing on a house that was built back in the uh, early 1980s and the option to uh, just completely replace everything is not there. The option to use treated wood is not there and the reason being is because it is today is actually Halloween October 31st and this porch needs to be painted and ready to be put on the market for sale so therefore I can't use treated wood because if you use treated wood in order to paint it you have to wait at the very minimum six months and that would be in the summer uh, you don't want to put paint over treated wood when it's uh, new because it'll just blister up and come off so what I am going to be doing is duplicating some parts that are cedar and duplicating some parts that are Douglas fir one of the problems we had with the Douglas fir parts is you cannot get, in, at least in this area, 2x4s or 2x6s made out of Douglas fir. It's just not, they're just not available. So what I'm going to be doing is ripping down 2x8s, 2x10s, 2x12s to make the necessary Douglas fir parts I need. And because those little edges on there where I rip that will need to be rounded, they'll have to be run through the router table with an eighth inch roundover bit. So yeah, it's a little bit complex. Uh, but we'll get through it here. It's not uh, impossible. And here later on in the video, you'll see where this is. I'll be doing it here in a couple days. But what I'm going to be doing today is uh, getting the parts ripped on the table saw here and getting them prepped for later on this next week. Our weather is supposed to be in the uh, 60s, which is unusual for the first part of November. And the uh, owner of the uh, house wants to be able to paint these as soon as possible. So we're going to get everything prepped, I'll get set up, and we'll do some ripping. Okay, one of the first things I need to do is change my blade. I, right now I've got a uh, 80 tooth in there for uh, ripping some, uh, or cutting some plywood. I need to uh, change that off to a ripping blade. And if you're wondering about whether the saw is unplugged, no it isn't. What I do have is an emergency stop on here button that uh, disables all the saw controls. I'll uh, be doing a video here in the future on uh, the modifications I made to this saw. If you've never thought of making one of these to store your blades, it's just a 12 inch square piece of plywood with a uh, hole drilled in the middle with a half inch bolt through it so you can keep all your blades in a nice neat little place. And I have the ends marked, for example this one here is marked rip, this is my rip blades. I could have used that other blade to rip these but I have quite a few to do and uh, with being a fine tooth blade it would be a uh, long project and for those who think you need to super torque your blade you don't need to do that tight is tight you don't need to like just crank on it and I'll be ripping two buys so there we go right there for a height zero clearance insert and the first rip I need to make are for some two by fours and we'll be making those out of uh, two by eights so set this here for three and a half and we'll run them through. Okay, my first mission is to make two two by fours out of this two by eight. I'm <laughs> 
Should say that was actually a two by ten, not a two by eight. Next, I need to make a two by six and a two by four out of a two by twelve. It's great fun trying to wield around these big pieces in this small shop, but I can do it. Do the two by four profile first. Okay, one of the next things I need to do is put a little bit of a round over on those edges where I just sawed to match the uh, profile of the existing boards or what would come from the factory. And I do have a round over bit in here. It's a little bigger than I need it to be, but I can adjust for the depth for that. So we'll get this cranked up here to do a little bit of a sample run. Well, they need about an eighth inch round over. This is a three eighths round over bit, but I can uh, adjust it down. Bring my fence in, although it does have a bearing on it, it's a lot easier to follow the fence. What I do here is use a ruler and put this against the bearing and set it against the fence so that it just barely touches that bearing. make any adjustments I need to. So that ruler needs to just barely roll that bearing there. You don't want any back and forth like this here. Just like that. And I'll do a little bit of a sample cut. It'll make a nice little round over just like this. So now you need to get dust collection hooked up. challenges here is to duplicate these railings as you can see uh, this one's in not too good a shape and they have an angle on the end this one's even got a nail in it I do have another example from the other side that's in a little bit better shape although it's still pretty gnarly and what I need to do is find these angles in the length and I was able to get a piece of a 2x6 rough sawn cedar that is exactly the same size I just need to uh, find these angles and cut them on the miter saw. Okay, I need to find these angles. So what I have is uh, one of these little digital angle gauges. And I know that my bed is exactly perfectly flat. Turn this thing on. Set it on the table here. Zero it. And if I hold it on this angle, 
I'll get a reading of that one is 55.5 degrees. This one over here is 55 degrees. So I'm going to assume this is a 55 degree angle. I just need to uh, measure the length and cut these to length with a 55 degree angle on them. And I can do that on the miter saw. Okay, so I had the idea of uh, cutting it this way, but that's not going to work because this is too tall to set up and miss everything and get it back against the fence. So I'm going to have to cut it this way by turning the bevel. So even though this here does go down to 55, I can't do it by turning this vertically. Okay, so I set the bevel on the miter saw here to 35 degrees and I had a piece of scrap here I did a test cut in and I compare the original to this and this side is pretty gnarly but you get a pretty good idea. We got a pretty good exact match there. So now I can cut the uh, new material to that length. Or to that angle and then uh, we'll get the right length. That'll be the leading edge of the cut. Okay, so there's the old one and the new one stacked on top of each other. So we got an exact match. I just need to make another one. All right, now the last thing I need to do before I go out to uh, where this porch actually is that I'm working on. Um, here's a piece of the stock from the old railing. And I'll lay it on top of the new railing pieces I cut. And as you can see, the new material is just slightly wider. Um, I did that because I could not find this exactly. I was really fortunate to find this in a rough cut cedar. And I need to be able to match everything else that's on the uh, porch railings, as you'll see when I, I get out there on site. So I'll just cut this down and th uh, rip it down and, and we'll head out to the site. Okay, here's the project. And no, this is not my house. This is for someone that needs to get their house on the market here pretty quick. And we are trying to get everything set up so they can finish painting on this porch. Uh, I'm going to be replacing the steps. Here's the railing tops that I duplicated. It's extremely windy. I'm going to try to keep my back to the wind as much as possible so I don't get a bunch of mic noise. Uh, this house was built in the 1980s. Uh, all of these uh, porch railing parts are red cedar. And uh, down at this end here, the uh, lower cord that holds all these balusters had uh, been damaged and so that's going to be replaced. Uh, the base here is, I should say the floor, is all Douglas fir and it's been painted and, and I'm by a highway so you're going to hear traffic. So everything is in fairly good shape, just needs to be repainted with the exception of the very outside board here. Um, I don't know if it had been damaged from maybe kids at one time climbing up there or whatever but the edges were broke off so maybe replacing this with Douglas fir as well as the stair treads and the risers. Uh, normally I would be using treated wood for this but we need to be able to paint this right away uh, so we can get this house on the market and I don't have time to let that wood dry for a year. So I'm going to get set up here and try to get some of this done and not blow away and it's cold. You know, this is where the railing goes and then Theory, this should fit. And by golly, it does. These are pilot holes with a countersink. Yeah, sure. I'm looking down the line here, not everything's square. Imagine that. Yeah, 
Well, whoever cut these balusters didn't cut them all the same size. This one here is definitely thicker than this one and this one. So it sticks out and I see it was painted before, so I guess it always been that way. Get a screw stuck in down here on the end so this thing doesn't shift on me again. I know if it was my place, I'd be changing that, but it's not. Roofs on cedar, good place to get splinters. This was previously held on with nails. And they had pretty much uh, rusted off. Didn't take much at all to get the old railing off. Here we have it, two replacement railings. I didn't video doing the steps because that's just putting boards on a, screwing boards down, nothing magic about that. Now I've got to fix this ribbon around here on the porch deck. Well, I got all the easy stuff done, so save the best part to last. And I swear when I uh, brought this two by six out here, it wasn't twisted. But now it's got a twist in it, um, and I just have to work with it. Um, you can see where the old balusters were. I'll be putting them back in the same place and uh, fastening them to this bottom 2x6 after I replace it. Uh, it was originally toenailed in. I'm going to use pocket holes and pocket screws and anchor it on both ends. And once all the balusters are back in, it's not going anywhere.
Okay, mission accomplished. And it is a chilly one out here in the uh, 40s today. Of course, it is the 2nd of November, and I'm in northern Illinois. But it's supposed to be up in the 50s later this week, and the person that owns this house wants to do the painting, so everything's ready to paint. Uh, one change I did have to make, this bottom board down here, You, I mentioned earlier that it was twisted. Well, as I went down the line, I could not pull the twist out, so I had to go get another board. And unfortunately, I had to drive 20 miles each way to do it, but by golly, we got her done. Um, granted, this is a little bit different from the uh, videos and projects I usually do, but there's going to be a lot more of that stuff coming up because kind of let a little bit out, cat out of the bag here. Um, I bought a house. I already own a house. I bought another house. And this is kind of what they call the handyman special, and there's all kinds of projects coming up on that one because it needs all kind of things. I bought it for less than half of market value. Kind of give you an idea that, uh, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of projects coming up, so there'll be a lot of uh, home repair type videos coming up. Uh, this here with repairing this porch, yeah, this granted this is not for everybody. Kind of gives you a little bit of an idea, though, of uh, what you can do if you need to replace something or maybe just fix something. Now, one of the things that kind of drove me nuts here was uh, these balusters are not all the same size in thickness and width. So what I started out using was a block of wood to space them. Well, that worked fine until I started noticing that some were wider than others, and then I had to kind of really watch what I was doing so I didn't get them out of plumb. But we got her done. So if you got anything out of this at all, I appreciate getting a thumbs up. It always helps the channel. Of course, we're always looking for subscribers. And next to that subscribe button is a little bell. If you click that bell, you'll be notified when I post another video. And you never know what kind of project it's going to be. See you in the next one.